Hi, everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. You all asked for it. You say, Gina, please, can you show us how you make your corned beef? That's what I'm going to do today. I have an amazing recipe for you all. It's so easy. You make a Gina Young style, it's going to be so tasty. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You all never had my corned beef before. You better make you some. Here's what you're going to need. Right here, I have some beautiful corned beef brisket. You will need some fresh garlic and the lemon is just to show you that I've cleaned my corned beef with lemon, salt, and water. Right here we have some pre-chopped up butternut squash. You want to use some fresh carrots and fresh celery. We're going to have some potatoes. You will need onion and bell pepper. We have a little bit of rosemary that we're going to use and right here you can see that I have some chicken broth as well. Feel free to use vegetable broth or beef broth if you'd like. Right here we have some beautiful cabbage and I have this here. This is my secret to amazing corned beef brisket. It gives amazing flavor. Y'all never had this before. Give it a try. And right here is the little packet that comes in with your corned beef brisket. You want to use this. This is the somewhat, I believe it's pickling season, but it really gives this corned beef a great flavor as well. Now, you will need some chicken base bouillon, which is the better than anything. If you don't have this or you don't want to get it because it's too expensive, you can always use the Maggie Pollo, which is the chicken bouillon powder, or you can use the beef bouillon powder. You will need some wine. Feel free to use red wine. I'm using a white cooking wine today. You can also use any wine that you drink as well. Okay, so right here I have some Himalayan pink salt. We have some garlic powder. Of course, we're going to put some parsley in there because it makes everything nice and beautiful. And believe it or not, we're going to use some of that Montreal steak seasoning. Let's make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this amazing quick, and, well, it's not quick. It does take a while. And if you don't have patience for this recipe, then, you know, you might want to make sure when you make this that you have a lot of time on your hands because this here, it's going to cook for several hours, but I tell you one thing, it's definitely, definitely worth it. I almost caught myself because I was going to see a quick and simple recipe, but I tell you one thing, it's worth the wait. So now let's go ahead and get started. First thing that I want to do is season my lovely meat. But before we do that, let's go ahead and trim off some of this fat. Okay. You see the fat cap that we have here. You don't, need to trim it all off but we do want to trim some off i've sharpened my knife and only thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to go in just like so and get some of it off once i can get a nice hold on to it i'll take the unwanted fat off and we'll leave some on leaving some on will assure that your meat will stay nice and tender because a lot of this meat during the cooking process will render off and what rendering means is it'll kind of melt down into meat, into the meat to keep it nice and juicy. Okay, so just cut off a little bit. You don't need to cut it all off. Keep in mind that some of this fat will melt. All right, I'm going to try my best not to get to the meat part. Just like so. I'm going to show you how I trim the whole thing. Now the bottom and the sides does not have fat, so you don't have to worry about that. There's only one side with this fat cap. Just like so, pretty simple. I'm telling y'all one thing, everything that Gina Young does in this kitchen, you better believe you can do as well. And yours is gonna turn out exactly like mine's would. Absolutely, all right? Corned beef is not hard to make. And like I said earlier, if you have the time, you will have a beautiful meal to make, you know, like maybe for a special occasion, maybe for the weekend or the holiday, or just because, you know, it's your day off and you want something nice and hearty that's gonna stick to your bones. All right, this is that meal for you. Now, this is 
because I'm putting the cabbage in it, I'm not making corned beef and cabbage. Okay, I'm just putting some cabbage in it. I make corned beef and cabbage a little different. Okay, and one day I'll actually show you all how I make my fresh corned beef and cabbage. You all do have a video of mine where I make the canned corned beef and cabbage and it's absolutely out of sight. You better believe it is. I love making the canned corned beef as well. Okay, so you can see I have a nice amount. I'm just going to trim a little bit more off leaving some on beautiful that right there that will do the trick i'm going to discard this i want to wash my hands and i'll be right back hey everyone let's talk about a few things so when you are making the corned beef brisket i highly suggest that you use one of these here this is a dutch oven but clearly you can see that my dutch oven is too small to make this okay like we could cut it up and do that but it just wouldn't work out okay so if you don't have a big enough one just use a pan that can safely go in your oven now this recipe does not have to be cooked in the oven you can cook it on top of the stove as well so instead of me using my dutch oven today i'm going to use my handy dandy wok that's going to fit everything perfectly in here okay so that's definitely if you have one of these use this first but if not find you a nice pan that you can put in your oven if you wanted to cook yours in the oven now all of those spices um, I have mixed them all together just like so we're gonna go in and we're gonna season this meat and we're gonna let the seasoning soak into this beautiful corned beef brisket for around about 20 minutes actually okay so let's go ahead and season heavily not too much seasoning don't get crazy with it but on the other hand, do not be afraid to season. Those of you that are afraid to season, listen here, your food will have no flavor. Don't be that person. These spices smell absolutely amazing. My goodness, Ooh, you better make yourself. Mm, doggone, you better make yourself. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna turn this over. That's just my oven beeping, letting me know that my oven is nice and preheated to 375 degrees. That's the temperature we're going to use to cook this amazing piece of meat right here. Look at this. Get the sides. We're going to let that sit for a half an hour before, 20 minutes to a half an hour before we start to cook it. All right. Just like that. Remember, I'm using a nice amount because this is a nice piece of meat. You want to make sure it has flavor. Don't make flavorless. Don't make flavorless corned beef, guys. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. So now that we have that nice and seasoned, I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to come back and show you how to make the broth that we're going to put our meat in. Everyone, right let's have some fun. So the first thing we want to do is get your veggies chopped up. Now, if you can look back here behind me, you will see that I have some veggies that I'm going to wait to put into our corned beef and our broth that's going to go in in bigger pieces it's going to go in towards the end of the cooking process so it can still stay intact now as far as these veggies right here we're going to chop these up it doesn't matter how you chop them you want big pieces little pieces medium however it's just fine we're going to chop these up and these are going to cook so long they're going to just disintegrate down into flavor land okay so don't worry about these don't worry about how you chop them up okay these ones we want to chop up nice and pretty and big pieces because like I said towards the end of the cooking process I'll show you what we're going to do with those now let's go ahead and take some of this onion just like so and save some of this all right make sure you wash off all of your veggies you want to wash off the pesticides and you never know who's handled your veggies before you've purchased them so always take that step to wash your veggies off so we're going to give this angry onion a nice cut <laughs> in hopes that it doesn't make me cry. You all that are familiar with me, you know, me and onions really don't get along. <laughs> all right, let me get the onion pieces off. All right, we're just going to go in and give it a nice rough chop. Like I said, don't worry about how you chop them. These are going to disintegrate. We're going to cook them so long. The other ones are going to stay intact. They're going to have some nice bite to them. Put it in your pan here just like so 
all right we're gonna chop up some of these bell peppers this is all flavor that we're putting in here flavor on top of flavor on top of flavor on top of flavor my goodness uh, there it goes my eyes are watering of course my eyes are watering <laughs> You all that are familiar with me, you know that I'm really not a fan of carrots. But sometimes, even if I don't like it, I, and I feel like, and I know that a recipe needs something, I'm going to put it in there. You know, this recipe definitely needs carrots. It needs that flavor. And just because I don't care for carrots, I'm not going to be selfish and not put them in there. Because my family and friends and loved ones would love to have the carrots in there. So we're going to put them in there. Okay? That's simple. All right. We're going to go in and cut up some of the celery. I'm just doing a rough chop just like so keep your digits in you don't want to chop any digits off <laughs> just like so all right beautiful I'm going to grab a different knife and I'm going to give this garlic a nice chop but before that let's go ahead and put some of our beautiful rosemary rosemary is going to give an amazing fragrance and a great taste to go along with this corned beef rosemary is definite with this recipe get you some in there let's see and you don't need a lot because a little bit goes a long way trust me that right there is going to do the trick believe me so now i'm not even going to grab a different knife we're just going to go in and slice some of this garlic just like so in this manner because this is going to cook so long it's just going to get nice and soft beautiful all right i got some peel on there that i want to take off amazing get that in there get that in there now that pickling spice that comes with your packet you need this throw it on in there get it all out of that packet it's beautiful this right here give it a try y'all never had this before give it a try it's beautiful it's going to give you great great flavor with this recipe and you only need one packet all right so then we're going to put our chicken broth in you want to use beef broth you want to use vegetable broth that's fine okay just like so and i'm going to see if we're going to use two whole boxes this is a 48 ounce of chicken broth it's okay to use the low sodium absolutely it is but the key is to cover the meat you want your meat submerged in your water your liquid your broth whatever you're going to use because that helps to tenderize and keep this corned beef nice and tender just like so keep in mind that a lot of your water your liquid will definitely evaporate during the cooking process look at that like it's beautiful and it smells so good i wish you all were here to smell this goodness all right so then as far as our wine we're not going to put our wine in just yet that'll be towards the end of the cooking process but i am going to grab a spoon and we're going to put a teaspoon you can put a teaspoon to a tablespoon of your chicken bouillon base it's amazing hey everyone now let's go ahead i decided to put a tablespoon of it in just because it's so good and i cannot resist the amount of chicken bouillon base that i put in because it's so 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 tasty my goodness just give it a nice stir just like this and i'm just stirring all of the spices and flavors around kind of breaking up that chicken bouillon but you really don't have to worry about it because during the cooking process trust me it'll melt all right and get that rest off just like so and here's what we're going to do we're going to take this beautiful piece of meat right here and we're going to put it in look and you can see how the spices had time to kind of soak in see how they're not dry anymore they've really soaked into this beautiful protein i'm going to take it fat cap side up and put that on the top you always put the fat cap on the top okay so it can render down into the meat just put it in there nice and gently just like so and what i'm going to do i'm going to wash my hands i'm going to come back 
and we're gonna start to chop up our veggies that are going to our corned beef um, when the corned beef is almost cooked. I'll be right back. Everyone, we're gonna get this in the oven, but we wanna cover this up tight. I do have a lid that goes with this, which that lid is glass, and I don't wanna put that lid in. So you take your handy dandy, you all have aluminum foil. So we're gonna put it on here nice and tight. Okay, really take your time to roll that foil around the rim so no steam escapes. Okay, because that's how it would be in your Dutch oven. That lid would be nice and tight. So we're going to make the foil do the same thing. And actually I'm going to grab, looks like I want to grab one more piece just to come across this way. I'm going to do just that. And I'll be right back. When I've used that third piece of foil just to make this nice and secure and tight. Come on this way, let's put this in the oven. In the oven we go 375 degrees, middle rack, not the bottom rack and not the top rack. And you can see right here that I've put my top rack on the floor because I'm not gonna use it. All right, 375 degrees. Let's start chopping our beautiful veggies. All right, so now, we are here. Make sure you wash your veggies. Don't forget. All right, I'm gonna chop the ends off, just like so in this manner. And I'm gonna go in somewhat of an angle, just like this. I want those huge pieces like that in with my corned beef. Put as much veggies as you like, or honestly, as little bit as you would like. These veggies are gonna cook probably the last half an hour of that corned beef cooking. All right. <clears throat> just like so. I'm just going in an angle because it makes everything nice and beautiful. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. You can cut it how you want, okay? This is just how Gina Young likes to do it. I don't suggest putting too, too many carrots in with your recipe because carrots will tend to make things a little bit sweeter and we're not, we don't want this to be sweet. Okay, I think that might be all I use with the carrots. Quick hands. Okay, so now let's chop up our celery as well. Nice big chunks. Just like so. And now I am not a fan of stewed potatoes. Let's talk about the potatoes. There's a lot of people that like to put potatoes in, you know, like with their roast beef and corned beef and stuff like that. I'm not a fan of it. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna use potatoes, but we're gonna make them on the side. I'm gonna share with you all how my grandma used to make boiled potatoes. They are absolutely amazing and they go perfect right alongside of these, of this corned beef. All right, I love when I make these specific potatoes. These potatoes that I'm gonna share with you all how I make today is probably my favorite potato to make. Absolutely, because it's a childhood memory of mine and that's how I like my potatoes. And it's really simple. And once you find out how to make these potatoes, you're never turned back to other potatoes. All right, so you can see we have our celery done. Let's get it in here. Nice big pieces. And even though these are big, they don't take any longer than, you know, uh, let's just say 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. It doesn't take too long. I'm gonna chop that one down a little bit. All right, I'm gonna cut some onion in hopes that I don't go crying because it's just horrible. These onions, they fight against me and you know, they plot against me. <laughs> And then I'm rubbing my eyes for the next half an hour. All right, let's see. Or trying to get my eyes to stop watering. Let's just say that. All right, let's do away with this. And, and same thing, same thing with the onion. We're going to chop up big pieces. All right. Just like so in this manner. Got nice big pieces. That right there will do the trick. 
You better believe it will. Let's get that off of there. And cut this one down just a little bit. If you wanted to put maybe two or three cloves in here, cloves gives amazing flavor with your corned beef. All right, here's this right here. Here in a second, I'll be right back. Now let's go ahead and chop up the rest of our veggies. So I have the other half of the bell pepper, and we're just going to give it a rough chop, just like so. All of this is flavor, you hear me? If you wanted to use a different bell pepper, each bell pepper gives a different flavor then by all means you can. Okay, now I've taken off some of the outer leaves of the cabbage and I've washed my cabbage. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We want to chop this cabbage just like so. I need to use a little bit of elbow grease. Come on, Gina. You got some strength, girl. All right and we're going to cut our cabbage just like so. We're going to keep it intact because that's how it's going to go in and cook with our corned beef, just like this. It's pretty interesting, right? Absolutely it's interesting. I just like, you know, and honestly, if you wanted to chop it a different way, then you can, okay? But I like to leave mine chopped in big pieces, and if it falls apart, it's okay too, all right? You can go in and do this if you like, or you can keep it like this, all right? I'm gonna cut the a half of this one as well because I like a lot of cabbage in mine. All right, those will go in towards the end of the process as well with the other veggies. Let's chop this one up. I could not be more excited. I am so excited for this recipe. I cannot wait to dive in to this amazing corned beef. We love corned beef here at the Young's house. We cannot get enough of it, especially when I make corned beef and half hash. Have you all ever seen my video for how I make corned beef and hash? You all never seen it before? Check it out. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun and really quick and simple to make. All right, so. I'm gonna use less than a half on this one because I feel like I don't need too much. That right there is gonna do the trick. Beautiful, we can set all of these beautiful veggies aside. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to start to chop up our potatoes. Our potatoes so we can make boiled potatoes. All right, I've washed my potatoes off, and now we're going to start to peel them. I know, I know, I know. You all get on me every single time I don't use a peeler. I don't want to use a peeler, guys. <laughs> I don't want to use a peeler. I'm not a fan of a vegetable peeler, so I'll use my knife. Well, Gina, how come you can't use a paring knife? Well, just because I want to, guys. Like, <laughs> relax. <laughs> all right. Just like so. And then I'm going to show you how I like to cut these potatoes for the boiled potatoes. Okay, everyone, now that we have our potatoes nice and peeled, here's what we're going to do. This is how I like to cut my potatoes for boiled potatoes. Just like so, in half. And then this way. Pretty simple, right? That's because it is simple. All right, and we're gonna rinse these potatoes off. We're gonna rinse them off because we wanna rinse off all of that unwanted starch. We're gonna rinse these potatoes until the water turns nice and clear. When you first put your potatoes in the water, of, co of course, it's gonna be nice and cloudy. Rinse all that cloudiness off, and your water will become nice and clear. You wanna use cold water when you're boiling your potatoes, of course. Always start off with cold water. At least that's how I do. <laughs> I never start my potatoes with hot or warm water. All right? These potatoes are so easy to make. You can cook them with the lid or without the lid. It's up to you. Up to your discretion. All right? I'm going to make a lot of these because these are my favorite. 
I'm gonna go in for like five of these potatoes. Absolutely, I am with a nice hunk of that beef. Everyone, let's get started on our potatoes. I've rinsed our potatoes until the water turned nice and clear. Get all that starch off. Okay, so here's what they look like. We're gonna put them into our cold water. Anytime you make potatoes or noodles, you always wanna salt your water. So we're gonna salt this water. We're gonna put a nice amount in, not too much. We're gonna stick with the pink Himalayan salt theme. Okay, so we're gonna use that to salt our water. And turn this on a medium high heat. And we're gonna cook them until they're nice and fork and tender. Fork tender. And what fork tender is, is where you go in with your fork and you put your fork down in that potato. If you put it down and it slides right back out and that potato slides down the fork easily, your potatoes are fork tender, they're perfectly done. But if you take that fork and you push it in that bad boy, you're having a hard time, the potato doesn't slide off the fork, you wanna keep cooking them for a little bit longer. All right, so let's go in with some salt. Don't be afraid to season, guys. Those of you who are afraid to season, your food will be flavorless, all right? You can cover these or you can leave them uncovered. I'm gonna leave mine's uncovered. Medium high heat is the way to go. Hey everyone, let's talk about how long are we gonna cook our corned beef? Well, it all depends on the size that you purchase. Okay, so you wanna start looking at it at two hours and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open it up after two hours. I'm gonna go in with my fork and see just how tender it is and take a look at it, all right? But the size that I got, I don't remember the size and I think I'll have to go back and see if I can find the size on my package. Um, I'm gonna plan to cook it for around about three hours, but at that two hour mark, we're gonna go in, open that bad boy up and see how tender it is. If it needs to cook a little bit longer, then we'll cover it up, let it cook a little bit longer. But that last half an hour, like I said earlier, we're gonna go in with these beautiful uh, fresh veggies. We're not gonna cook them so long to where these ones turn into mush. The ones that are already in there, they're gonna mush, they're gonna turn into Flavorland, and that's what you want. Now, as far as our potatoes, this is how we're gonna season our potatoes. Once um, we pour the water off after they're done cooking, we're gonna put pepper, we're gonna put garlic powder, parsley for flavor, some butter, and some salt. That's all you need for these potatoes. These potatoes are outrageous. Take a look at our potatoes. Our potatoes are fork tender, and let me show you what that looks like. See that? Just perfect, okay? Look, perfect. It should slide off. <laughs> slide off like you're supposed to. <laughs> Don't make a liar out of me. The potatoes are done. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and season these bad boys up. I've turned my heat down to low. I've poured off all of the water. All right, things like that just happen when you're recording, you know? All right, so let's put some garlic powder. We're not gonna stir them around because if we stir them around right now, what's gonna happen is your potatoes are so tender, they're gonna fall apart. And we're not making mashed potatoes, okay? We're making boiled potatoes. Okay, so get you some garlic powder on there. Just like so in this manner, don't be afraid to season. Get you some black pepper on there. Just like so, these are my favorite. Oh, these are my favorite, I'm so excited. Some parsley. All right, nice amount, it's gonna make it nice and beautiful. Just like so. And we're gonna put some salt in. Okay, I'm gonna put the salt in my hand. That way I can put it onto the potatoes like I want. Just like this. Distribute that salt nice and evenly. You can use any kind of salt that you would like to use. Just don't be afraid to season. All right, just like so. Now we're gonna grab some of this lovely butter. Get you some on there. Now, what do you do since we're not gonna stir it? We're just gonna put some nice dollops on. And then we're gonna put a lid on this and we're gonna let that butter just melt down into those potatoes, melt over top of these potatoes. And you have some of the most amazing potatoes you wanna have right alongside with your corned beef. All right, that's a lot of butter, Gina. You put as much butter as you wanna put in yours, okay? All right, there we go. Now watch this. Put the lid on, just let that butter melt. 
potatoes are done and out the way. And by the way, my house smells so good. From upstairs to downstairs, if you come to that front door, you're gonna smell the beautiful fragrance of that corned beef that's cooking. We're gonna let it cook. We still have some while to go. Uh, here shortly, I'll be coming back and we're going to check on the beef and then we'll add our veggies in. Okay, everyone, let's take a peek down in these beautiful potatoes. Look at this. Oh, look at this beautifulness. These potatoes, you know what? I can't, I can't. I just, I have to taste it right now. These are my favorite. Oh my goodness. These are like the best potatoes. My goodness. Take a bite, take a bite. Oh, they're hot, but I don't care. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Don't. On that good. Mm -hmm. mm. So it looks like, let me wipe my mouth, guys. It looks like we have a snowstorm. Come out this way and I'm going to show you all. Come on, guys. Let's take a peek out here. Let's see. I think I'm going to open the door a little bit so we can see. Look at this. So Dakota already doesn't have school on Friday. So he'll be off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And he doesn't have school on Monday. But from the looks of what's going on right now, he might not have school tomorrow either. This right here, it looks like we're in a snowstorm. Can you all see that? Let me know in the comment section if you can see all of this snow that's coming down. What are we gonna do, guys? Snow everywhere, but I'm prepared. We've got a snow blower. We got the salt to put on the porch so we don't go slipping and sliding. Be ready for that weather, guys. It's coming. Okay, everyone. Prince and Polo is here. They are here in the kitchen with me. They are enjoying the smell, soaking up all of this beautiful goodness. They love coming in the kitchen with me when I'm cooking. Say hi, Prince and Polo. All of you ask on a daily basis, where is Prince and Polo? We miss Prince and Polo. So anytime I get a chance, I bring them right in the kitchen with me. Here they are. Here's a little snack, boo-boo. There you go, and here's your snack, sweetie pie. Good boys. There you go, look at them, they're so sweet. Look, look, sweetie. Here, sweetie pie. Yeah, boo-boo. Such good boys, they're good babies. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna wash my hands up really good, and then we're gonna take a peek in at our beautiful corned beef. The corned beef has been cooking for two hours, it's time to go in and check it. We're going to use a fork. We're going to check it. And hopefully it's nice and tender. If it's not tender, then what we're going to do is we're going to throw it back in the oven for around about maybe another hour. We're not going to put the veggies in until that meat is fully nice and tender. Let's make our way over this way. Check on the meat. Okay. I'm so excited. I'm going to be very careful when I open this because this bad boy right here is going to have so much steam. Okay? Oh yeah. And I tell you what, it smells absolutely amazing. You see that steam? Whoo, you better make you some. Y'all never had this before, honey. Listen here. I'm going to let that steam release for a few more minutes and I'll be right back. Everyone, let's take a peek. All right, I'm gonna fan away some of this steam, just like so. Now what I'm looking for is a nice fork tender. This should, oh, look at that. My knife goes in there with absolute, and see how easy it came out? This, it just feels juicy, my goodness. Now it's time to put these lovely veggies in. Let's go. I'm, I'm hyped now, guys. I am so excited, yes! Can't wait for this. Like my mouth, I'm drooling right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not literally, but man, I'm so excited. These beautiful veggies, just get them in there. It doesn't matter where you put them. They're going to get cooked and they're only going to take around about a half an hour for all of the veggies. Okay, just like so. Beautiful, we'll just put them in here, just like this. I'm gonna go in with some of that beautiful butternut squash. You better believe it. Who is gonna give an amazing flavor? Now some of this broth I do need to take out. The reason why is because as I add the veggies, what's gonna happen is that broth is gonna come up and we don't want it to overflow into the um, 
oven. Okay, so I'm gonna pour some of that out and I'll be right back. Let's give this broth a taste. I wanna taste it and see where my seasoning is at. If I feel like at any time that this needs a little bit more seasoning, you better believe I'm gonna put some more seasoning in there. Okay, and what I have in mind is that Maggie Pollo. All right, that chicken bouillon powder or the um, chicken bouillon better than anything. Let's see. Oh, that gone. It doesn't need anything. Man, that tastes so good. Now watch this. Get you some cabbage in there. It does not have to be submerged because once again, we are going to cover this and everything's going to get nice and cooked. All right. Just like so, get your cabbage in there. I cannot wait, guys, like I've never been this excited before. <laughs> Who is just a figure of speech, but I am very excited about this. Look at this. Put you some cabbage in there. If you like a lot, throw it in there like I am. Whoo, you better make you some. You better make you some, Gina Young style. Whoo, just throw that extra right there. I'm gonna put this in there. We're gonna cover this back up. Throw it in the oven for around about 35 minutes. I'm gonna check, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check one of those big carrots. And once, once the big carrot is done, that means all the other veggies are perfectly done. You don't want them to cook down the smush. I know I've said that several times, but I totally mean that. Don't make your veggies mushy. We already have some veggies that have really cooked down and has let off flavor. Those ones are mushy and they kind of disintegrate it. These ones, you want them to still have some bite. Cover them up once again with three pieces of foil or a nice tight lid. It, throw them back in the oven and I'll be back one this took three hours to cook this is gonna be nice and tender I cannot wait to slice down into this so you all can see it okay so here's what we have you can see that there's lots of steam and our veggies are perfectly cooked they're not mushy they're still gonna have some nice bite to them and they're gonna remain nice and vibrant because we didn't overcook them now right here take one more peek down into these potatoes here's what we need to do i do want to let my meat rest with any meat that you cook you want to let your meat rest let it rest for a while so when you slice down into it all of those beautiful juices that you work so hard for doesn't come running out onto your platter so let's take our meat out okay just like so and we're gonna put our meat right onto, let's see, let's put it onto our cutting board because we're gonna need to cut that. But what I do wanna do is I'm gonna grab some foil. We're gonna tint this and we're gonna let it set for a half an hour. Let me grab my foil. So let's tint the meat so it can rest and all of the juices can kind of redistribute back into the protein. And it doesn't come running out when you slice it. Just set that aside, just like so. And now what we're going to do, we're going to arrange our beautiful veggies onto a nice platter. And then we're going to arrange our corned beef on the platter as well. Let's take some of these. Look at this. Look at this. This is like so beautiful. St. Patrick's Day is around the corner. And you all have asked me. You said, Gina, can you please show us how you make your corned beef? Here it is right here. Enjoy. I am so glad that I was able to make this recipe for you because so many of you asked me for this recipe. I had so much fun making this recipe and truly I cannot wait to dive into this. Look at this and look how beautiful. My goodness. Hoo it's healthy. It's going to be so delectable it's a, it's a hearty stick to your bone meal look at this stick stick to your ribs you got all these lovely veggies that has just cooked in this beautifully seasoned broth now there's one thing that i forgot to show you all i did go in and i put two capfuls of the white wine in right before i put this back in the oven with the veggies okay so don't forget the wine the wine really makes a difference, it gives an amazing taste. So I'm just gonna align my beautiful veggies. Look at this, like I'm ready, to, I'm ready to go ham in 
on this cabbage. Look at this. Oh, wee! Let's get some of these beautiful veggies at the bottom. Look at that. Those of you that love carrots, this is the dish for you. Make it for your family and friends and all of your loved ones. They will love you for this. And don't forget that butternut squash. It's really going to give you an amazing flavor. Okay. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take some of our lovely potatoes. Put some on the plate as well. Look at this. They are beautiful. <laughs> Ooh, you better believe they're beautiful. What I want to do is I want to put those potatoes right here and we're going to put the meat right there in the middle. My mouth is watering. Hoo -wee. We're eating good tonight at the Young's house. Oh my goodness. It is Wednesday. Perfect meal for a Wednesday. Perfect meal for any night. Doesn't have to be a fancy day to make this. Look at that. Can this be made in the crock pot? You better believe it can. And it's going to turn out exactly like this would. Here in a few minutes, we're going to continue to let our corned beef rest under the tent. When I come back, we're going to slice down into it. We're going to plate it. I'm going to give you all that first hey everyone. Bite. Let's cut down into our beef. Watch this. You want to cut against the grain. If the grain is going one way, you cut the other way so that it slices up right. Otherwise, if you cut with the grain, it'll just shred up. And we're not looking for shredded beef, okay? We're not looking for shredded corned beef. Guys, I had to take a couple of swallows right now because my mouth is salivating. Look how beautiful this beef is. Hooey. Let's see. Let me put it this way so y'all can get a really good look down into the beef. Cut it thin. Cut it thick. How do you like it? Make this for St. Patrick's Day. So many of you are looking for a great recipe. This is the recipe. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. It does take some time to cook. But like I said earlier, it's well worth the wait. Look at this. Look how gorgeous. Look, can you see? Tell me you don't see the juice. Tell me you can't see the beautiful juiciness of this amazing corned beef brisket. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Hey, everybody, take a look at this here. Take a look at this corned beef. Now, this part right here, I'm going to put right back into our liquid because we're not going to eat this. What we're going to eat right now is the part that I sliced. So this part, put it back into that liquid so it stays nice and juicy. If you all enjoyed this video today, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know, hey, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Let's say a quick prayer. A quick prayer so you all can get that first bite. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today and for every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night and your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our mind in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have no authority over this family in Jesus' name. Devil, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head the food, the love, the peace, and the joy that you bring us every day, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. Let's dive in. Now, but first, what we want to do is go ahead. My hands are impeccably clean. Let's put that beautiful meat right here, just like so, so we can enjoy corned beef Gina Young style. You all never had this before, baby. Listen here, you better make you some. You better make you some. Look, take a look. Hoo wee Guys, you are in for a treat. When you taste this, my goodness, you're going <laughs> to make you want to smack somebody after you taste this. We're going to take two nice pieces. Look at that. Look how juicy. Oh, mommy. Mommy. Woo. Look at that cabbage. 
Oh man, give me some of that butternut squash. Oh, I know some of you want the carrots, so I'm going to taste the carrots for you all. All right. Let's dive in. Thank you once again, Jesus, for this beautiful meal. First, I'm going to give you all a bite of these amazing potatoes, and then we'll go in for that meat. I know that meat is so hot right now. I don't want to burn the daylights out of my mouth. Taste that. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. 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 Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Actually, not being a fan of carrots, that carrot is so good. <laughs> it's so good. It is flavored so well. Look at that cabbage. Perfectly done. Never mushy. Mmm. 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 Mm. Butternut squash, some bell peppers and onions. Oh, so good. Dad, go on, that's good. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go in for this amazing beef. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Take a bite right there. Corned beef, Gina Young style. Mmm. 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 Oh, go on, that's good. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. mm. We're gonna have a little bit of potato to go with that corned beef. Mmm. <laughs> mm. This right here, definitely a winner for sure. I'm gonna go in for a little bit more of that cabbage. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> mm. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night. Man, that's good. Mm -mm -mm.